Hi, my name is Brent with Subsurface Solutions. Here today to show you a different type of correlator. Normally when we think of correlating, which I will elaborate a little bit here, um, we think of uh, a real-time correlator. They could be expensive um, and oftentimes out of the budget for uh, people that they could really help. So what a correlation is, is it's when we take a, a, a unit, a station, that is listening on the pipe say at a valve over here and a valve over here down the road. You know, maybe they're four or 500 foot apart. We can get some long distances depending on the type of line and uh, the uh, diameter of the line. And they look at time and they say, hey, it's getting to this one before this one. So much so that we can actually say that, hey, it's 300 foot from this one and it's 100 foot from the other. What's great about listening on the pipe is there's a bunch of other noises. We might not hear the, the sound over the, the ground. We can hear much smaller noises and pinpoint lines much better. And you can use this to inspect the whole entire system for water loss and it will just ping you straight to where the leaks are. Works the best on cast iron and ductile iron. Plastic, it's, it's a lot harder is the easiest way to, to leave it. This is mostly for your systems that have a lot of metal. Uh, copper, lead services, you can get some on transite, you can get some sound, but it's basically listening directly on it. So the SoundSense I loggers they're unique in that normally what they're going to use is radio. Everything's going to be real time. We'll have a central unit. But what these have is they have an IR infrared reading head. And this is our, uh, our data connection. What we'll do is this box will actually communicate with these. And then we can also plug in a, a computer uh, so that we can draw up our pipe segments and it will tell us where a leak's at. They're all sealed off. We have long five-year battery life that they're meant for, to have. Just, of course, depends on how much you use it, but um, they get sent back in. We can replace the batteries, but they're, they're sealed so they can be in the water. So what we have in this scenario right now is we have a leak somewhere along this street, and we just need to be able to find it, ping it, um, and we're gonna set up at a couple different spots. We've got a hydrant over this way, and then we've got another hydrant over here. Well, there's a mainline valve that we're gonna uh, drop one of these on, and then a hydrant valve up there. Basically just gonna set it to go off here in 10 minutes. That gives us enough time to be able to drop the loggers. And then what they do is they actually just will listen when we tell them to. When we're done, we're going to load them back into the box. It's going to load off the data, plug in the computer, and it's going to tell us where the leak's at. So on this, we can charge the set itself, but I'm going to press OK to get it rolling. And then I want to modify. And we're going to set a recording. We're going to do recording startup. I'm going to press OK. Now we have different options. What's our delay? Are we going to start in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or are we going to start at a certain time? These are quick sets. We can plug in a laptop as well or computer and, you know, set it up for different times. But what's great about the system is we can make these changes right here with the box. So I'm going to have it go and set it up for 10 minutes. That'll give us a little bit of time to go set these loggers. It's going to take its audio file and then we'll capture it. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Length of recording on each. I'm going to make it 10 seconds. That's plenty of time. Make it too long and you might capture extra noise you don't want to capture, like usage. And then we can have an interval. Do we want to listen to it um, you know, once or twice? Well, I'm going to go ahead and we'll do two recordings just so that we have two samples in case somebody is using their water at the moment. We're going to go ahead and we're going to listen again. I meant to do two. Here we go. And okay. So it's setting up the loggers. And now it's downloading the data that it's had on it. And then it's going to um, basically give them the information they need to be able to go off in 10 minutes. And it's going to give us a little countdown on the, str uh, the screen uh, after it does this. The communication is through the IR reading head. It still takes a moment. It's not as fast as like a USB cable, but what's great is it's watertight. So 
loggers have been programmed. It says four loggers. We have four loggers in the box. This small box, um, it's just a little over $10,000 uh, as of today. Um, and this gets you into correlating. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take it to the next step. All right, nine minutes. Take these two. Get to going. And go to the top one first. All right, so I'm gonna set the first logger. I do wanna keep track of which ones I'm using. Um, easy little thing I can do. I mean, try to put it down on a sheet of paper or I could just take a picture, of the location in the background, because it's gonna tell me what number on the software we're using. So we can use rope or I've got some tether cords here. And then we just wanna drop it down. We wanna to try to get that on the nut or at least on the valve. We want some good metal contact. And you can tell when you're on it because it's got a pretty strong magnet on it. A little off to the side. All right. All right, on to the next one. All right, second logger, gonna drop. Just wanna make sure I know which serial number that we have right here. We have 13470. So again, don't necessarily need to do it. You can jot it down, but especially as you put more and more of these out. I've got a geotag on the camera if I need to look at the location or just a reference from the background. All right, that's solid. This is the good part. Howie just wait, let it do its thing. I'm gonna let it take a couple of recordings. And so basically just gonna come back in about 10 minutes, pull these off and we should have a couple different correlations we can work with. All right, so some time has passed. The recording should be done. I lost track of the time a little bit, but what I did in the meantime is I made sure to measure out the distance of the lines. What's required for correlation is that we know what the pipe material is, what the diameter is, and then also the distance. Basically, we need to know how fast sound's moving, and we also need to know what distance sound is moving so that it can pinpoint and correlate that leak. So now's the time I can go ahead and pick up these loggers. We're gonna set it back in the case and we'll upload the files. Oh, that one's on there good. It's retrieved. We had good contact. Off to the next one. All right, just need to retrieve second logger. Now we just go ahead and we're gonna go plug it into the box. Let the computer do its work. Now it's time to put the data back on to the unit, upload it. Um, we did have two more that we could have used. We could have correlated from a different end. Um, but two is all you need for a correlation. Uh, the extra ones would just be kind of a bonus or if you really had a huge distance you were trying to cover, that we're on a hill right now, um, maybe you're not sure how far up the hill that leak really is starting. So. Maybe we leave another one even higher up just in case uh, we want to see if it's that far. You know how leaks, they can find any weird ways to be able to surface hundreds of feet away. So we're just loading them into their spots. Going to drop the case down, keep the IR reading head nice and clean. We're going to go to OK just to bring it back up. And now we're going to download data. Press OK to start. Now this process takes a moment because it's actually downloading audio files from an IR reading head. Um, and then when it's done, uh, we're gonna connect it to the computer and let it do its work.
All right, that took 20, 30 seconds or so. If we had all four, basically double that. Um, but it's completed the download. So I'm gonna take the USB cable uh, and plug this in. Now, one thing that's interesting is we look at these two connection ports right here. Um, we could actually daisy chain these so that we could have several boxes all working together at once. But we're good right now with just these four. And we're just using two of them for this correlation. <laughs> all right, so the information has all been loaded onto the computer. Now I just need to generate a pipe layout. Uh, so we've got our logger that ends in 70. Um, that's down below on the southeast side. And 72, it's gonna be up above on the north side uh, on the hydrant valve. And now what I need to do is draw in some pipe. I'm gonna add a joint at these two different locations where the pipe joins. We have uh, two different T's, a T off the main line to the other main line here, and then a T to the hydrant valve. Then I just wanna make sure to put the pipe distances in from these loggers. So from here, I've got five feet. Better yet, it was four feet and 362 feet going north to south. And then the last section here is 56 feet long. Going to the logger. It's all six inch cast iron. If we wanted to, we could actually kind of cheat and just make one long stretch because it's all exactly the same uh, pipe material. This is more to be able to add in different pipe materials or sizes. Press OK. Now we can go ahead and run a correlation between these two loggers. It's going to generate the file. Now we can see that we have a couple different correlations that have been done. They're about the same, but we have two different recordings. So we can look at these and we can see what the confidence level is between the two different recordings. Now we can look at real time absolute coherence, look at the sample data. We can even listen to the audio files. This just gives us the ability to analyze this uh, more in depth if we want to, but generally we can make this pretty easy. I'm gonna look at just this first one. We have 90.9%. And then we have our backup one. And what do we have? We have a total of 376 feet from the north, and we have 45 feet from right here, uh, basically heading west from the mainline valve. We'll go ahead and measure this out, verify, make sure that everything looks good, but right now this is good confidence. Anything over 90% we feel good about, um, really good about. And then you can always tell when you see there's this high peak. What we always have in uh, correlations is uh, you'll leave either, either hear level or spread or a signal to noise ratio. We want, we don't want to see a bunch of background noise over the distance on the graft. We want to see this one sharp peak. And that is what know, as how we know it's actually pinging the leak noise. And in this situation it is. So we'll go measure out 45 feet. All right, Let's start at zero. And this is our spot. Now we can get out like a ground mic, see if we can uh, verify this spot. It's not a bad idea to do some core drills. So actually drill through and listen and just verify. Our confidence is high. Uh, we consider anything within three feet to be a pretty good hit uh, when we're using a correlator. And we'll have to follow up and see how accurate we are. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out. You can check us out www.subsurfacesolutions.com.